time for the Susan Taylor Podcast, where we discuss the yoga of mind, medicine, and healing. Author of Feeling Good Matters, Sexual Radiance, and the Vital Energy Program, Dr. Taylor imparts authentic knowledge and practical tools that inspire, educate, and empower us to be a healing force for positive change. So join us and take your life and our planet to the next level. Hello and welcome to episode 69, Does Fasting Improve Our Vitality? Fasting is where you abstain from food, either for a large part of each day or for a few days in a row or for weeks or for months, depending on what your protocol is. But it's one of the oldest dietary interventions in the world, and modern science actually confirms it can indeed have a profound and beneficial influence on our health and longevity. In today's episode, I'd like to talk about the health benefits of fasting my technique that I've used with clients and students over the past few decades on fasting, and guidelines to conducting your own home fast. I'd like to start by saying that fasting is an ancient practice, and it's been used for religious events as well as during times of health and disease. It's the body's natural way to let go and detox, which makes it a little bit different from starvation because of the intention that's set meaning that when we fast, we have an intention to best serve our living organism to let go, detox, and ultimately create space. If the intention is to do harm, then that changes and it moves to starvation, or if the intention is not having enough. Fasting can be done with food, talk, or anything that we seem to need to rest from doing. A lot's been written about fasting and a lot of good for you as junk food, as far as I'm concerned, because a lot of people are going out and talking about fasting, but not really looking at the overall technique and protocol of fasting. Again, we live in a very sound bit environment. So we get sound bits, and I'll talk about that today, of what fasting is and the benefits, yes, but no one's really taking into account the whole entire picture. So that's what we really want to look at. Fasting was where the body really needs time to rest from the daily activity of digestion rather than dealing with any of the sound bites that we're getting what fasting is all about. And here's what I mean by sound bites and what I'm really talking about. In a paper, A Time to Fast, which published in November of 2019, in the issue of Science, it reviewed many of the health benefits of fasting. And some of those benefits that they spoke about was the adjustment of meal size and frequency, helping to really postpone the onset of disease and delay aging. You know, they talked about periods of fasting with or without energy intake can have profound health benefits. So that's all, that's substantial and we can prove that in science also spoke about the underlying physiological processes of the metabolic function in using fuel sources when we do have fasting or withholding from food and how repair mechanisms may be optimized for energy utilization and cellular organization. So that's another fact that they found. They also talked about directing the integration of balance nutritious diet with controlling meal size and patterns and periods of fasting to develop strategies to prevent and postpone and talk about chronic diseases associated with aging. In general, they came around by saying prolonged reduction of dietary intake, we know that caloric intake, and periodic fasting cycles have the power to delay the onset of disease and increase longevity. Well, I always, this is what I always say though, digestion of these statements in general, they're general statements with facts that have proven to be positive, but they lead to a sound by technology that we become immersed in. And that's where the whole intermittent fasting came about, how people are fasting using coffee, using stimulants, using 
all sorts of protocols thinking that they're doing more benefit to their body. So we take one idea, we run with it, and it's been going on for centuries, and we create a whole health movement out of that. And I'm here to tell you that sound bite technology really, really doesn't work, and it actually causes more harm than good. But let people have their own uh, experience, and perhaps I can offer some information that will shed light on this. So let me talk about fasting, because it's been a subject of my research interest for more than two to three decades. And I know all about the physiology of fasting and its psychological effects, because I fasted myself numerous times, keeping scientific journals, journals and actually modulating and um, measuring my own physiological responses. So let's talk about it. When we stop eating, our body goes into autolysis, which is self-digestion. After the first three days, it begins by the breakdown of much of our worn out aged tissue, and it eliminates toxins through the bowels and skin. Now, if you've been on a really poor diet, that's not going to be helpful for you. So you want to also drink plenty of water during this time, during these first couple of days, because you have to flush the kidneys and flush out any toxins. I always recommended diluted fruit and vegetable juices because of what I just said. Most people are on not very healthy diets. You know, there's the preparation for a fast and the coming out of a fast. And that's where people, again, the sound by technology just says fast. And I just came from uh, I've just came from India, and people were talking about doing these intermittent fasting, how they'll just eat one meal a day and they're losing weight. Well, that's great, and but they're saying and then they have one day where they eat all junk food to stir their body into a shock treatment, etc. And when I hear this nonsense, my my head just spins, and I just think, wow, that's what people are actually getting from what they're reading in the media. Because most people fast for the wrong reasons, though they don't recognize the side effects. You know, lengthy, fa lengthy fasting, which I've done, is not an ideal way to cleanse the body nor lose weight, though you will lose weight. And these sudden fasts, well, you could gain three pounds in a week. You know, it's, it's not something for weight loss and doing sudden fast. It's better to not eat anything for three days and really come in and go out of a fast than to just do these intermittent types of things that are shocking the body. We don't want to shock the body. It's like taking a shower in ice water, you know, after heavy exercise. That's what, that's what most people are doing with these types of shock treatments and fasts. The worst results or the best results actually come after a fast ends. The faster, you know, we prove that we can do that. We've been able to follow it, but coming back into eating food, digesting, and bringing the body back into full nourishment potential is a real skill. It's a technique, and that technique has to really be done skillfully and with a systematic, precise protocol. As you've heard me say in meditation, that has to be systematic and precise. So does the way you go into fasting or not. The practice of eating and fasting will send the body into a metabolic imbalance if it's not done correctly. And in effect, uh, the liver will try to accommodate the nutrient fluctuations and because it really doesn't know what's happening to it. The body works optimally when it's on, as I said, a regular schedule with few, if any, surprises. Regularity is the best way to cultivate a stable mind, which again, we're talking about having a vital mind and a vital body here, since the brain is an organ to send signals to the entire body. And now when our blood sugar levels are off, we go into a different state. I know people are talking about they can live on ketones and they want the ketogenic diet, the paleo diet. There's a diet for everything, but just really pay attention. Look at things from the long haul perspective, not from the immediate. Anybody can do anything 12 months to two years, but follow it through the long periods under stress, under calmness, and under living a lifestyle, and you will come to see what the results will be. As I mentioned in Feeling Good Matters, the overnight fast lasting from 6 p.m. to breakfast, which remember is not 
the food is not eaten directly upon arising, gives the body the time to cleanse itself without the shock treatment. And over one month, you're going to have fasted 11 complete days. I have totally revitalized my whole body working with the overnight fast. I've put students on it, clients on it. We do them in the spring. We do it together as a group, and I might be doing that again in the spring. I haven't decided yet where we really get back into igniting and optimizing the body's engine digestion so that we could assimilate the nutrients that we need to have a vital mind and a vital body. Researchers do feel that the overnight fast, as described in my books and in my work, contribute to cell renewal and actually counter oxidative DNA damage caused by free radicals. You'll be rejuvenating your whole metabolic process and any of the byproducts. And you'll also be training your mind in a very systematic way. Remember, the body and mind are one and they need to go together. So you might want to think about this. When you wake up your digestion from self-cleaning overnight and for those 12 hours, as I said, doing the math, you'll have fasted at least 11 days in one month. So here are some guidelines that I'd like to use uh, or give you and share with you that I've used with clients by not creating the metabolic disturbance by overdoing it. And overdoing it means shocking the body and not having a systematic, precise way and a diet that supports really honoring and nourishing your cells, the cells of your body and the cells and the vibratory quality of your mind. First, assess your situation. Do you eat close to bedtime? Do you wake up fatigued? Do you carry excess weight? Do you have trouble sleeping? Are you a nighttime eater? That's what you need to really address by the type of fast. And next week, I'll talk about the variations in fasting. But you really want to decide a fast based on that. Have you had a freshly prepared meal each day for the last month or so? Do you prepare your food fresh? Or are you eating outside? Are you eating on the run? That's going to determine how many hours you could even fast. Again, you have to pay attention to this. Include freshly made teas and pure water throughout the day if you're going to try the overnight fast. So what you want to do is you want to assess your situation. Have, if you're going to do a fast, an overnight fast, have one or two freshly prepared meals per day. Include fresh waters and teas. I'm not talking about coffee and stimulants here because they're going to rob the body of the nutrients that it needs to actually do the detox, to actually do the cleansing and the uplifting of the cellular structure. You see, that's where you have to really be skillful here. And then utilize supplements skillfully. I usually say don't, but we're in such a devitalized uh, nutrient supplement society right now with how we've destroyed the whole food chain that I I am suggesting sometimes to take some supplements. And so you have to keep that in mind and then learn to meditate. You should always have meditation as part of your fast because it allows the mind to remain calm. When the mind is calm, you need less calories. The body is uplifted and rejuvenated because the cellular structure is in a calm state. So let's keep that in mind. There'll always be times when you're unable to resist the urges of certain foods, and you wouldn't be human if you didn't get allured by some of these sensory stimulants that are in our society and in our food chain. But always remember, remain calm no matter what. Don't beat yourself up. Be human. Drink warm ginger tea, fennel tea, kukicha tea. You know, you could do any of those things. Drink peppermint tea if you need to digest some fats. Use fennel seeds if you have too much gas. There's so many techniques. Fast when it's normally time to for you to rest and relax. And try to rebalance your taste buds and take a walk in nature on a daily basis. Do all of those kinds of things, and I know I'm giving you a lot, a handful here, but I just want to give you a taste of really what it's about when we talk about fasting. We have to really, fasting is the tool, but we need to have all the other things in place when we're going to have a fast that's going to give us the results that we're looking for, which is a rejuvenated mind and body.
And that's really what we're looking for. Again, soundbite technology does not work because we're just getting pieces of information. And we see that in the meditation world. People are just taking little sections of what meditation is all about and calling it meditation, but it's really not. So you're not going to get the full results for your efforts. And you want to get the full results because you're putting the effort in. Fasting on a daily basis between meals and in the evening is a sure way to stay healthy, vital, and alert. By practicing the overnight fast, you're going to allow your body to do the house cleaning and your mind to rest and become vital again. Practiced it for one month and you should have fasted 11 days. I'm just repeating what I've said and that would be a great accomplishment. If you need to talk to me about that, I'm always available. And I thank you for the question that did come in on fasting. And as I said, I'll continue it next week with some strategies that are out there. Talk about the different fasts that people are marketing. And I'll give you my opinion on that. Before closing, I'd like to say, please join me for the new resilience training webinar series, where I'm going to talk about discovering and reconnecting to your vital energy, your vitality, because that's the key. We must be vital and live vital. And that's really the key and the message that I want to bring across. We're going to discover and reconnect. Remember, that's what we want to do because that vitality is within us already. And that brings us to the end of this episode. The Susan Taylor podcast does come out every week and it's available on SusanTaylor.org, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and other plat podcast platforms. Visit the SusanTaylor.org website for information or to contact us with any questions or comments or feedback. I'd like to thank those of you that did write in for fasting. It was more than one person and it always gives me some food for thought for myself or some things to focus on for our content. If you'd like to get involved, join us on the Healing Force Facebook group and at susantaylor.org slash Facebook. And thanks for listening. And until next time, remain calm.